Welcome back to the Core EM Podcast. Core content for anyone, anywhere, and just in time. This is the official podcast of the NYU Bellevue EM Residency Program. A couple of weeks ago, I saw a patient with Cauda Aquinas Syndrome, which prompted me to read up a bit on the topic, and I thought it'd be a good one for us to review on the podcast as well. Cauda Aquinas is defined as a syndrome characterized by dysfunction of multiple lumbar and sacral nerve roots in the lumbar vertebral canal due to compression. To understand this syndrome, we do have to understand the anatomy a bit. The spinal cord terminates in the conus medullaris, and that's at the T12-L1 vertebral body in adults. The term cauda equina refers to the collection of nerve roots from L1 to S5. Compression from various causes results in lower motor neuron pathology. There's a number of pathologies that can cause compression of the cauda equina, resulting in the syndrome. Compressive causes include disc herniation, which is the most common cause, epidural abscess, spinal epidural hematoma, discitis, a tumor, trauma causing retropulsion of a fracture fragment, and finally spinal stenosis. As with many diseases, the physical exam and the history are going to be the key to making the diagnosis. Unfortunately, the presentation can often be difficult. Symptoms may develop acutely or progressively over time. The most common symptoms are back pain, bilateral leg pain and or weakness, change in sensation in the lower extremities, bladder dysfunction, which can either be retention or incontinence, decreased sensation in the perianal area, bowel dysfunction, either constipation or incontinence, and sexual dysfunction. Bladder dysfunction occurs as a result of autonomic innervation disruption, and it leads to retention and then overflow incontinence. On physical examination, the patient often will exhibit lower extremity weakness, numbness, or paresthesias, and again, these are usually going to be bilateral. Decreased or absent lower extremity reflexes may be present. In the long-term or chronic onset, you can see hypotonia or atrophy of the lower extremities. Urinary retention is going to be there, and you're going to see increased post-void residual. You can have sandal anesthesia, which is reduced or absent sensation in the perianal area. And finally, you can see decreased or absent rectal tone. Of all of these symptoms, changes in bladder function is the most common, but depending on where in the time course, the patient may have retention or incontinence. Both of these symptoms should set off alarm bells. The other thing to key in on is bilateral symptoms, whether that be bilateral weakness, bilateral sensory changes, or bilateral decreased reflexes. When you see a patient with this kind of presentation, there are other etiologies to consider other than direct compression of the cauda equina. The differential diagnosis should include things like multiple sclerosis, transverse myelitis, myelopathies, spinal cord infarction, spinal AVM, or syringomyelia. Once you've got a suspicion for cauda equina syndrome, you've got to get the appropriate imaging to find out what's causing it. Plain x-rays and CT scans can show bone and soft tissue abnormalities, but not spinal cord abnormalities. CT myelogram allows for visualization of the spinal cord and associated abnormalities, but it requires a spinal tap followed by injection of contrast. MRI is the imaging modality of choice for cauda equina syndrome. The imaging types that you want is to obtain sagittal and axial T1 and T2 sequences. Neurosurgical or orthopedic consultation should be obtained for any patient who has cauda equina syndrome because they may need emergency surgery. Surgery should be performed within 24 hours to increase the chance of better outcomes, and the presence of urinary retention or incontinence at presentation is a poor predictor of outcomes. A couple of take-home points before we finish up for the week. Cauda equina syndrome is a rare emergency with devastating consequences. Early recognition is paramount as the presence of bladder dysfunction portends bad functional outcomes. The presence of bilateral lower extremity weakness or sensory changes should alert the clinician to the diagnosis. Saddle anesthesia or change in sensation and any bladder or bowel changes in function should also raise suspicion. MRI is the diagnostic modality of choice, though CT myelogram can be performed if necessary. And finally, prompt surgical consultation is mandatory for all patients with cauda equina syndrome, regardless of the symptoms that are there at presentation or how long they've been present for. That's all for the Core EM podcast this week. Come on over and check out the site at coreem.net. We've got a ton of great core content emergency medicine. We'll have a core post up on Wednesday and a journal update up on Thursday. Don't forget to check out our Facebook page, follow us on Google Plus, and on Twitter where our handle is at core underscore en. Thanks, and see you all next week.